God is good. <laughs> God is good. And all the time. God is good. And all the time. Do you believe it tonight? <laughs> God is good. All the time. He put a song of praise. In this heart of mine, God is good. Yes, He is. All the time, through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. Yes, he is. God is good. All the time. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. Yes, He God is good all the time. Yes, He If you're walking through the valley, there are shadows all around. Do not fear, He will guide you. He will keep you safe and sound. He has promised to never leave you or forsake you. And His word is true. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good. All the time, through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Yes, He yeah. is. We were sinners and so unworthy. Still for us, He chose to die. He filled us with His Holy Spirit. Now we can stand and testify. That His love is everlasting And His mercies, they will never end God is good all the time He put a song of praise in this heart of mine God is good all the time Through the darkest night His light will shine God is good, yes He is God is good all the time Light will shine, God is good, God is good all the time. Do you believe it tonight? Let's sing it together. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good, God is good. He's so good, he's so good, God is good, he's so good, he's so good, all the time. He's good. <laughs>
We have your slips, and if you haven't sent that in, send it in by email. Continue to pray for frontliners and many people that are sacrificing during this coronavirus crisis. So we've been studying hope to cope in the coronavirus pandemic. In Romans 15, 13, it says this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why don't we pray right now, pray for our frontliners, pray for doctors, many of them are making sacrifices. Uh, we th we're thankful for people that are making masks and other things to help the frontliners. And let's pray for this message. Father, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the Word of God that's alive and powerful. And we pray that we would focus and pay attention and learn from your Word. We ask you in Christ's name. Amen. Our subject today, if God is good, why evil? If God is good, why evil? You know, during this coronavirus, uh, coronavirus crisis, the COVID-19, uh, the truth is coming out. Over the last few weeks, especially in the last few days, amazing truth about the source of this virus. And I want to caution some of you not to become racist. Uh, we know it came from China. We know it came from, there was a lot of cover-up. Uh, we were lied to. However, we have wonderful Chinese people in our school, in our churches, in this country, and in China. Chinese people gave their lives so that we would be warned about this virus, even though it was later than it should be. So please don't react. Don't become a racist. We're all in this together. We're all descendants of Adam. We're all Adamites. And uh, we need to pray for those who have deceived us. We need to pray for the, wealth, the, the World Health Organization. Imagine we would trust them. And yet there was a cover-up. A horrific evil. And so I want to talk about this evil. But in spite of this, people are sacrificing all over the world so that we can resolve this problem. So the Bible confirms that God is good. Listen to Psalm 100, 100 verses 4 and 5. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting. And his faithfulness to all generations. And so we... We have a song we sing, God is Good All the Time. It's by Doug Mullen. Uh, here's a couple of the lyrics. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in my heart. God is good all the time. Of course, Doug Mullen sings it much better than I do. I hope you will enjoy that song. So, Again, the question is, is God really good all the time, even during the coronavirus, even when so many people are suffering, even when so many people have lost their jobs? There's funerals and the family can't even attend. There's so many negative things. Is God really good all the time? And I want to answer that question before I give you the evidence. Yes, God is really good all the time. Listen to Psalm 105 again. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures all generations. This is from another version, the same verse. And what I want you to understand, if you know the truth about God, his character, his promises, his plans, his purposes, if you understand that, then you will truly say, God is really good all the time. Even though there's many negative things in this broken world. So even on our worst days, our worst days, God's goodness is, is there. Here's David in one of the absolute worst times of his life, the abs absolute revolution. And listen to what he says in Psalm 23, 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
And even if he dies, and he ultimately did, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As a believer in Jesus Christ, you really can't lose. Even on your worst day, God is good. And once you take your last breath, you'll be with God forever. God, good people sometimes, and I'm talking about all of us, good people sometimes doubt God is good all the time. Listen to the psalmist in Psalm 73. Surely God is good to Israel. He was a Israelite, and he knew the Jewish history. He said, surely God is good to Israel. Look at verse 2. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. Look at this. Verse 3. For I envied the arrogant, and when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, he had his doubts about God's goodness. Look at verse 4. They have no struggles. Many of the evil people that are involved in the cover-up of this virus, they're healthy. They're not suffering. They don't have the virus, and yet they covered it up and millions of other people got it. So their bodies are healthy and strong while other people are suffering. Why do good people sometime, sometimes doubt God's goodness? Psalm 73, 5. Again, we're looking at the wrong direction. In Psalm 73, 5, they are free from the burdens common to man. We're talking about evil people. They are not plagued by human ills like the coronavirus. A lot of evil seems to be getting away with evil during this crisis. Look at verse 7. From their calloused hearts comes iniquity. The evil conceits of their mind know no limits. After this virus is over and the truth comes out, you're going to be absolutely shocked of some of the decisions that people make. But we need to understand that that does not touch the character of God. God will bring good out of this. He always has, and he always will. So I hope you'll pay attention. Now what I'm going to say is not to scare you, but to prepare you. There's a battle for your mind. And whether you believe in an angelic conflict, whether you believe in spiritual forces, they exist. They're your enemy. And if you're not aware of them, you will suffer the consequences. But listen to what God says, 2 Timothy 1.7. Even though there's so much evil connected with so many things in this coronavirus, look at 2 Timothy 1.7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. It is the spirit of fear that causes you to be afraid. It is the spirit of fear that causes you to have anxiety attacks and depression. But God wants you to have a sound mind. He has given you the power of his life during any crisis you face. So if God, why evil? I, I have a book, it's called, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. Uh, it's written by a scholar named Normal, uh, Norman L. Geisler and Frank Turek. Uh, he has many books on theology and Bible survey and so on. And this particular book is 443 pages. And, and in the Appendix 1, there's a dialogue between a Christian and an atheist. If God, why evil? And I think this will help you to understand some of the thinking of people that do not understand the Word of God. God's Word, more than any other source on this planet, tells us why there is evil. And we need to understand it. So this is a dialogue between an atheist and a Christian. Uh, it's actually kind of like a debate. Listen to the atheist. For the sake of argument, suppose I grant you that God exists. Will you then answer the question? The question is, if God, why evil? The Christian, sure. It's good to see you're making progress. At least for the sake of argument, he acknowledges God. So listen to the atheist. Remember, it's just for the sake of argument. So why doesn't your so-called all-powerful God stop evil? That's a good question. 
Christian, do you really want him to? Sure, of course. Okay, suppose he starts with you. Be serious, said the atheist. Christian, no really. We always talk about stopping evil, but we forget that if he did, he would have to stop us too, because we all do evil. Now listen to the atheist response. This is the response also of many Christians. Oh, come on. We're not talking about the minor sins of you and me, but we're talking about real evil, like what Hitler did. This is very important to understand this concept. The source of evil. Listen to what the Christian said. My point is not the degree of evil. There is no doubt that there is degrees of evil. And there's some serious evil going on today. But the source of evil, the source of evil is our free choice. If God were to do away with evil, then he would have to do away with free choice. If God did away with our free choice, we would no longer have the ability to love, that's a choice, to do good, that's a choice, to make sacrifices, all of the things that the frontliners are doing. This would no longer be a moral world. They would just say it doesn't matter, let them die. But people make good choices. Now listen to this with the, with the atheists. But not all evil is due to free will, to free choices. Listen to this, it's a good question. Why do babies die? Why do we have, why do natural disasters occur? Like typhoons and hurricanes. Why do we have something like coronavirus? Even though evil people may have made bad choices to cover it up and many other things, people are affected who had nothing to do with it. People who did not do evil still have the virus. We're going to come back to this question, but it's an excellent question. Not all evil is due to free choice. So, let's go back and start from the beginning. Before the original sin, there's temptation. Temptation is not a sin, but it gives us a choice. Again, before the original sin, there was temptation. Temptation is not a sin, but it gives us a choice. Very careful, very important to know the source of temptation. The source of temptation to do evil, to do sin and evil was also a choice. If God, if God is good, why evil? Many people ask the question, why did God create evil? The answer to that is he didn't. Listen to Genesis 1.31. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, and there was a sixth day. God made everything very good. Let me talk for a few moments about your enemy who started out as a blameless angel. Many people ask, why did God create the devil? He didn't. He, cre he created a blameless angel. I want you to listen to Ezekiel 28, 12 and 13, talking about this blameless angel. You were the model of perfection, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. You were in, listen, in Eden, the garden of God. He was there. He was the guardian angel there. Okay? Let's look at this guardian angel. Ezekiel 28, 14. You were anointed as a guardian cherub. That's a high-class angel. A guardian angel. A blameless angel. He started out. So listen to Ezekiel 28, 15. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created. God did not create evil. God did not create the devil. God created an angel, just like he created a perfect man. So a perfect angel chooses corruption. Now there's one thing that humans and angels have in common. We have the ability to choose. God set it up that way. And we'll find out all the details when we get to heaven, but a lot of it is revealed in the Word of God. So a perfect angel chooses corruption. 
Ezekiel 28, 17. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. Isaiah 14, 13. For you have said in your heart, this is his choice. He had everything. He had beauty. He had wisdom. He had rank. He had authority. He was close to God. But he said this, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Look at verse 14. I will be like the most high God. That was his arrogance. So a corrupted angel becomes the devil. Maybe you don't like that word. Maybe you laugh at it. Maybe you scoff at it. Whether you believe it or not, he's real. He's your enemy. And he's not ugly. He's beautiful. He's still like he was created, except now he's evil. So let's listen to this. Revelation 12, 9. That ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. You see, we're in an angelic conflict. He was hurled to earth and his angels with him. The Bible tells us that all of the angels had to make a choice. And about one third of them followed this evil angel. And that's why we have demons and fallen angels because of their choices, not because God created them. The tempter and the first man and woman now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I'm going to say, the devil made me do it. The devil made the evil uh, Chinese Communist Party cover it up. No, they made choices. And every time you make a choice, you are responsible. Temptation is not a sin, but it does give us a choice. So the tempter and the first man and woman. In 1 Timothy 2, 13 and 14, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. Now Adam also ate, and God holds Adam responsible because he was the first man. But I want you to understand something. Even if you're deceived, when you choose to sin, it still has consequences. Even though Eve was deceived, she still fell. She still became a sinner. She still suffered the consequences of that bad choice. Now the good news is that God in His grace has a solution for those bad choices. So I want you to listen carefully at the end of this Bible study. So the tempter of the first man and woman and temptation, listen carefully now, Temptation plus bad choices equals sin and evil. That answers the question. Where did sin and evil come from? Bad choices. Uh, Satan was tempted as a blameless angel, and so was the first man and woman. Romans 5.12 is very clear. We can't, listen now, don't say the devil made me do it. You have a choice. God holds the first man and woman responsible, but especially the man because he was created first and he was in authority and he wasn't deceived. Romans 5.12 Therefore, just as, listen, sin entered the world through one man, Adam, and death through sin, evil. And in this way, death came to all men because all sin. The Bible says all of us have sinned. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. The only exception is the perfect, blameless Lord Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at him. He also was tempted, big time, more than us. And he had to make a choice. The tempter and Jesus. Matthew 4, 3. The tempter came to him and said, just like he did to Adam and Eve, if you are the son of God, Tell these stones to become bread. Now Satan knew he was the son of God, but he was tempting him to violate God's policy of totally depending on the Father. The choice to win over temptation. In Matthew 4, 4, Jesus answered, by the way, 
This is your weapon. Jesus Christ, in his humanity, when he was on earth, used the same weapon you can use, the word of God. The word of God is alive and powerful. That's why it says, take up the whole shield of God. Put on the armor of, of faith. And faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Sanctify them, set them apart through your truth. Your word is truth. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So listen to Matthew 4.4. 4. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but, by every, on, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. He was tempted just like us in all things as we are, yet he, cho he chose to win over temptation. And that's how he qualified to become our Savior. The tempter in believers today, he's still real. And he comes to us all through many ways. He influences our thinking. He comes through fake news. He comes through lies. He comes through propaganda. He comes through evil people. And he's, they are influenced by him. And what comes out of their mouth is evil. So the tempter and believers today. Believers are still tempted even though they have a relationship with God. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 is a very important verse. I hope you memorize it. It says, no temptation has happened to us. It's common to man. But God is faithful and he always makes a way to escape. And in this coronavirus, many of you are going to be tempted to say, if God is good, why, why is this happening? Look at my family. Look at my children. They can't even go to school. We don't have any more money. What are we going to do? And that's when you're tempted to uh, challenge the goodness of God. So listen to 1 Thessalonians 3, 5. This is the Apostle Paul. Listen to me. Few people suffer more than the Apostle Paul. The things that he endured is just incredible. But listen to what he said to fellow believers. I said to find out about your faith. I hope your faith is strong during this coronavirus. I was afraid that in some way, listen, the tempter might have tempted you and our efforts might have been useless. It doesn't mean that believers lose their salvation when they get into temptation. But it does believe their faith becomes ineffective. They don't have a good positive effect and encourage others and help others and honor God with their lives. And so we have to be aware of this tempter. Remember, and this is important, believers win in the end. That is really good news. And in this coronavirus crisis, we win. We will win no matter what happens. Good will overcome evil, guaranteed. Always has, always will. In Romans 16, 20, the God of peace will soon crush Satan. He knows his time is short. That's why evil is so intensified in these last days. God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. And what's the good news for us? The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. You know what? Some of you feel guilty right now. Uh, you know, this kind of a crisis brings out many negative feelings, many negative emotions. Shame, guilt, uh, regret. When Satan reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. Okay? Uh, I want to show you a daily affirmation of truth. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think about Satan very often, except when unusual things happen, except when I find myself doubting the goodness of God. So I have an affirmation that's built on 1 John 4.4. 4. 1 John 4.4 4 says, Greater is he that is in you than he, your enemy, that is in the world. You try this affirmation. You can choose to say this affirmation. Greater is God who is in me than the devil 
is demons and all the evil that is in the world. God is greater than any evil in this world. He's greater than the coronavirus. He will wipe it out eventually. He will create a new heavens and a new earth and there will be no viruses. There will be no sickness. There will be no sadness. There will be no funerals. There will be no people dying. Forever and ever it will be that way. So again, the source of evil is free choice. Let's go back to our dialogue. The atheist said again, let's answer this question. But not all evil is due to free choice. Why do babies die? Why do natural disasters occur? We can add to that, why the coronavirus? I didn't cause it. I didn't cover it up. I didn't do anything wrong. Let's watch. Christian, the Bible traces it all back to the fall of man. No one is really innocent because we all sinned in Adam, and, and when we're born and when we live, we all choose to sin. And as a consequence, we all deserve to die. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Natural disasters and premature deaths are a direct result of the curse on creation because of the fall of humankind. This is very clear in Genesis chapter 3. This is very clear that even creation itself, Romans 8, uh, very clearly teaches that the whole creation is affected. The earth is actually cursed. There'll be a new heavens and a new earth in the future, but the earth we live on is not heaven. This is a broken world, and it's full of evil. The fallen world will not be righted until Christ returns. You can read the last two chapters in the Bible and it tells us about the new heavens and the new earth. No one is guaranteed a trouble-free life or a, a trouble-free life or a full life of 70 years. We're not guaranteed that. Babies die. Young people die. Teenagers die. So we have to be ready at whatever age we are. Atheists, oh, isn't that convenient? Dust off the Bible and tell us that God will make it right in the end. I'm not interested in the future. I want pain and suffering to end now. Why won't God end it? You know, Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So the answer to this is to have a relationship with God. Christian, God would like to have more people choose heaven before he closes the curtain on the world. Paul seems to indicate that Jesus will come back after the full number of people become believers. God is not willing that any should perish. The fact that he hasn't come back yet is grace for you and me and the people that haven't believed that we have the opportunity to choose right, to choose to love God, to choose to love others, to choose to help others. Atheists, well, while God is waiting for the full number of people to be saved, other people are hurting. Christian, yes, they are. And that means, listen, this is us. That means Christians have a job to do. We have the privilege of helping those who are hurting. Listen. Are you a believer in Jesus Christ? Do you doubt the goodness of God? We are his ambassadors for Christ here on this earth. In conclusion, the atheist said, so you're saying that evil has a purpose that has implications in eternity? Christian, yes. Why? Why do you insist on putting everything in the light of eternity? Here's the answer. Because we're going to be dead a lot longer than we're going to be alive. You know, we forget. We think about all the people dying with the coronavirus. Guess what? Everybody on this planet is going to die. And we don't know what age unless Jesus Christ comes back. And so we must understand that we're going to be dead longer than we're going to be alive. But for the Christian, that's not true. Only his body dies. His soul and spirit instantly is with the Lord. 
and then later on his body will be resurrected. If there's no eternity, then there's no ultimate purpose for anything, pleasure or pain. So God is still good when evil attacks and hurts us. In Genesis 50, 20 through 21, this is the story of Joseph. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. His brothers did terrible, evil things to Joseph. From age 17 to 30, one evil thing after another happened in his life. And yet he came to the conclusion that in all of this, God was still good. Even when the evil was our choices, God is still good. You know, many people like this passage in Jeremiah, but it's talking about people who were in captivity because of their idolatry. And when the 70 years were ended, God kept his gracious promise. And listen, listen to what he said to these Israelites who were captives in Babylon. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. And this is also true for us. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Even right there in Babylon, they enjoyed limited blessings. And God still had great blessings and plan for them. God is good and his purpose is always your ultimate good. In Romans 8, 28 and 29, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good, even the coronavirus. But unfortunately, it won't work together for good to everyone. But to those who love God, those who are believers and they die because of the coronavirus, Instantly, they're with God forever. Those of us left behind, if we love God, God is going to bring good out of this evil to those who are called according to his purpose. So is God really good all the time? The answer, dogmatically, yes. Through the darkest night, his light will shine. God is good all the time. Though I may not understand all the plans you have for me, my life is in your hands, and through the eyes of faith, I can clearly see that God is good all the time. I leave you with this. Train your mind to see good in every situation. And if you do that, you will come to the same conclusion. Truly, God is good all the time. Once again, I want to give you this salvation opportunity. Again, remember, you don't have to be in church to receive the greatest gift that was ever offered from the greatest father who gave the greatest son, who made the greatest sacrifice so you could escape the greatest judgment, the greatest evil, and live forever with him. We know that the whole world is groaning because of sin. However, once again, we know that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Listen to me. Whatever mistakes and sins and evil you have done in your life, Christ on the cross said it's finished. It is finished means paid in full. There's nothing you can add to the payment for your sin. All you have to do is receive what is offered, and that's the gift of God. Look at this, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you will be saved. Right where you're sitting, watching this program, for with the heart, one believes under righteousness. It's a choice. That's why John 3, 16 says, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. How can I know that I'm ready? Listen to 1 John again. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has a Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know 
that you have eternal life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the free gift of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you in spite of the evil that we're experiencing in this world. We know that you are good and you're good all the time. Thank you for this. We pray for our front liners. We pray for those who are in suffering right now. And we thank you for this opportunity. In Christ's name, amen. We don't charge anything for watching this video message and please don't feel obligated to give. We'd like to remind you that spiritual giving is a part of worship and Christian stewardship. It is a privilege to honor God by giving from the blessings He has given us. God loves a cheerful giver. You may send your offering through this account at Metro Bank. Account name Ophelia S. Quinto or La Rosa. Account number 1537153701691. Or you may go directly to Global Mission Fellowship Lucena or MLILC. At the AM Campus, please look for Ray Panopio. At the Abbas Campus, please look for Jay Madamba. Thank you for your giving. The previous slide are for people who are in the Philippines and they buy things in pesos. They do their spiritual giving in pesos. You can send to that bank account here in the Philippines. If you're international and you do your spiritual giving in dollars, I want to give you this address for our ministry for tax deduction purposes and so on. Designate donations to Ralph and Cindy La Rosa, Philippines, Operation Grace World Missions, P.O. Box 19508, Houston, Texas, 77724-9508. You can go online to www.ogwm.org. And the telephone number there if you want, if you need some help, is area code 713-951-6965. Thank you very much. God is good. <laughs> God is good. And all the time, God is good. And all the time, do you believe it tonight? <laughs> God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good. All the time Through the darkest night His light will shine God is good God is good All the time Here we go God is good All the time He put his song darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. Yes, He is. God is good all the time. Yes, He is. If you're walking through the valley, there are shadows all around. Do not fear. He will guide you. He will keep you safe and sound. He has promised to never leave you. Or forsake you And his word is true God is good Come on. All the time He put a song of praise In this heart of mine God is good All the time Through the darkest night His light will shine God is good God is good All the time Yes, yes. We were sinners so unworthy, still for us he chose to die. He filled us with his Holy Spirit. Now we can stand and testify that his love is everlasting. 